All right, we're over in East Village today, and I'm super excited because I feel like I haven't been over in the East Village for quite a while. But our first stop is to the Hole Gallery to see a couple of shows, actually, one by Rye David Bradley and Hannah Hahn's daughter, and then another by Kevin Christie. So this ex exhibit features Hannah's blown glass sculptures as well as Bradley's digital born tapestries. And at first glance, honestly, it's hard to tell that Rye David Bradley's works are actual tapestries. But when you look closer, like here, you can see that they are, the texture is really beautiful. So they're first digitally created artworks and then they're turned into tapestries. And the digital file of these artworks is actually for sale as well as a non-fungible token or an NFT that you can buy via the platform Super Rare. I love in general how Bradley is so bold about questioning value and reality, which is what I think NFTs by nature do. He's not only questioning or challenging the question of what makes an original artwork as well as ownership, the subject matter of his works question what is reality. He's taking faces of real people and then digitally distorting them, which brings into question, you know, what is identity in a world of Facetune and biometric surveillance? Bradley's artworks are complemented by Hannah Hahn's daughter's sculptures, and they're these beautiful, organic, blown glass objects. I'm honestly really loving this collaboration. It feels very modern and refreshing. In the second gallery space, we have an exhibit by Kevin Christie titled Memories or Weapons, which features 19 new oil paintings by the artist. And the show is a culmination of the artist's musings on the dependability of memory. Christie is examining how we as humans can manipulate, whether consciously or unconsciously, our perception of past experience. And the show divulges the dark side of memory, as Christy calls it, an apparatus to attack other people or yourself. I mean, I know I certainly do that.
You can probably tell there's a lot of influence of surrealism in these works, and in general, Christie uses surrealism to probe the human condition, and he certainly does so in this exhibit. It's really hard to pick one painting that's my favorite. They're all really unique. I just love his style. And some other exciting news, The Hole is jumping on the bandwagon and opening a second location in Tribeca. So now I can take you guys along to see all of my favorite galleries in basically one place. They're going to move to Walker Street, where a lot of galleries are, such as Bortolomy and James Cohen. And I just, I think this is great. I'm so excited. Next up is Jack Hanley Gallery to see an exhibit by Johnny Abrahams titled In the Divinely Human State of Nobodiness. I don't know about you all, but I'm really loving the emo undertones to a lot of these shows. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Johnny is a London-based artist that creates these really great abstract minimal paintings. And at first glance, Abraham's works look fairly simple, but if you start to look closer, you can see he's utilized a variety of textures in a really beautiful way, whether it's in these grooves that he creates with a palette knife that really reflect in the oil paint, or the different type of textures like linen and burlap that he's painting on. Jack Hanley Gallery's description of the show is symmetric or asymmetric, sometimes reminiscent of a theater curtain. The balance of paint and void spaces has a sweeping effect on the composition of each work. And I just love that reference to a theater curtain because once again, for works that are seemingly so simple, there is so much drama and elegance. So I just, I think that's a beautiful analogy. Very well said. Now we're at Eva Press and Huber Gallery, and I haven't been here in quite a while. I haven't been here since the Shabalala Self Show, which was so great. And this is going to be our final stop of the day. And this is an exhibit titled Florida 1989, and it features both photography and sculpture by Lucas Lalalok, Lalak. And all of his work is shaped by personal tragedy, <laughs> loving that drama. And it's no secret, I'm usually not a fan of photography, but I'm really loving his works. I love how he uses Photoshop to cobble together these strange and disturbing objects, almost creating these sort of like grotesque remixed portraits. And the gallery describes the works as exuding a sense that we are all navigating a shoddily constructed fantasy land. And yeah, I just, I love it. I love the drama. I love the emo undertones of all of this. And it's so true. I'm just very, very drawn to these works.
As always, heading home now, but thank you so much for coming along with me. I love sharing the exhibits that I'm enjoying with you all. As always as well, please let me know your favorites in the comments down below. I always love to see which ones stand out to you.